Hello and welcome students back to our next lesson in our AS Psychology course. Today we will be looking at central tendency. So what is central tendency? It's basically how we're going to measure the sort of sets of results and analyse them once we have them. So this is something which everyone has done before in GCSE Maths and it is a very easy concept because it is basically the three M's. And these are the mean, the median and the mode. So first we'll start off by looking at the mean. The mean is uh, also known as the average, and this is calculated by adding up all the data and dividing by the number of readings. So its advantages and disadvantages. The main advantage is that it takes all the data in consideration when calculating. However, the disadvantage is that it can be affected by extremes. So for example, if we have a test where uh, the students have scored 70%, 80%, 90%, and one of them scored 20%, that extreme reading of 20% is going to bring the average down to somewhere around 40%, which is much lower than all the other um, uh, sort of participants in that exam taking the test scored. So it's not a true reflection of what the average result really was in, you know, especially in tests where their sample size is really small. Next up, we have the median. And this is basically the central number in a set of results, which is found by ordering up the numbers from, you know, in numerical order from the smallest to the largest and then finding the middle number in that set. The advantage of this is that it is not going to be affected by extreme results. However, it doesn't give accurate results of um, if the test uh, has a sample size, which is quite small. So if we have a exam where three people did the test, one got 20%, the next two 30%, and the last got 100%, the median is going to say that the sort of middle number was 30%, and that shouldn't be a true reflection of what the test actually was, because one of the participants scored 100%. So that sort of 100% is just seen as an anomaly, and it isn't really taken into consideration. And finally, we have the mode, and this is basically the most frequent occurring number in the data. And the advantage of this is that it isn't affected by extreme results. However, it is not a central measure as the mode can occur at extremes. Unlike the median or the mode, it's not found as the a form of average, but instead it is the most frequently occurring. So the most frequently occurring uh, test score could be 10% or it could be 90%. And this may not be a true reflection of the what the data really shows because the rest of the class could be getting sort of 20, 30, 40%, but just because two people got 90% and no one else got the same score twice, the most uh, frequent is 90% and that's not a true reflection of what the rest of the class who were getting 20% and 30% uh, were achieving. Okay, so here we have some questions. I'd like you to quickly attempt these. It should just be going over GCSE maths last year. Um, once you have done these, hit play and check out the answers on the next slide. So until then, I'll see you then. Okay, so here are the answers. If you did get all five of them correct, congratulations. I'd advise you to move on to the next video. But if not, just go over your working out or rewind the video to check out uh, if you missed anything and reattempt them so you can try and get all the, you know, all the best grades for your exams. Okay, so this is the end of the lesson. Next lesson, we will be looking at measures of dispersion. And until then, I will see you next time. So thank you for watching.